Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how can you refer to a previous show in Power BI. Now, you can actually do that using Power Query, or you can actually do that using DAX. I'm also going to talk about if you have to refer to the previous show over a very large data set, how can you do that very effectively? All right, let's just start with Power Query. So I've loaded a very simple data set here, which has the date column and the value column. And maybe I'd like to refer to the previous row. That means against 1026, I'd like to get 1750. Against 1484, I'd like to get the previous value, which is 1026. How do we actually do that? Now, if you want to refer to the previous row in Power Query, you would actually need three things. The first thing that you need is the name of the table which table are you working in? The second thing that you need is the row number. And the third thing that you need is the column name. If you have these three things, you will be able to refer to the previous row. We can see that we have the column name. That's okay. We also have the row number, but these row numbers cannot be used. So we have to artificially create a, like a serial number or like a row index. So I'm actually going to go to the add columns tab in the add columns tab. I'm just going to go to the index column and start the counting from zero. The reason why I start the counting from zero is that because in power query, the reference or the first point of counting begins with zero, not with one. That means this is the zeroth row. This is the first row, so on and so forth. Now that we have everything that we need, let's just write a small formula to be able to get the previous rows record. So I'm just going to go to the add columns tab once again and create a custom column. And I'm just going to call this as the previous row and write the formula here. Now, remember what I said, the first thing that we need is the table. So I'm actually trying to work in this entire table. If I just go to the name of the previous step, the added index is the step where the entire table exists. So I'm just going to write the full step here. So I'm just going to write the hash sign in the inverted commas. I'm just going to write added index. And after I write the name, the step which contains the entire table, I now have to write the row number. And the way you write the row number is in the curly brackets. So I start the curly bracket and then I do not have to write a fixed row number. I have to write a dynamic row number, which is nothing but the name of the column, which is the index column. So I'm just going to refer to the entire column, which is the index column. And then I'm going to say that, Hey, index column contains the row number, but if you subtract one from it, I'm just going to go to the previous row. So minus one and close the curly bracket to close the row number here. And then after that, I'm actually going to write the name of the column here. And the name of the column is value column. So essentially I'm trying to say, go in this table, the row number is here, but you subtract minus one from there and the column name is value column. So I'm just going to say, okay. And what this is actually going to do is against 1026, it takes one minus one makes the row number as zero goes here and fetches that value and keeps it right here. Simple enough. Now, obviously there is no previous row and there is no minus one row in the data. Hence we get an error here. So let's just go fix the error as well. So I'm just going to go and open up this step. Once again, I'm going to use the try keyword, which is very, very similar to if error function in Excel. So I'm just going to say, Hey, power query, why don't you try this formula? If this formula works good enough, if this formula doesn't work, I will just write otherwise and I'll say null. Right. Try and otherwise is similar to if error in Excel. So try this otherwise null. I'm just going to say, okay, as soon as it finds the error, it just converts that to a null. And this is nothing but my previous row. All right. So let's just take a look at that. How do you do similar stuff using DAX in Power BI? Now, whenever you're working with DAX, there is no concept of a row. So artificially I have to create like a row index, something similar to what I did earlier. So I'm actually going to go to the add columns tab and in the index column, I'm just going to start the counting this time. I'm going to start the counting from one because in Power BI and you're working with DAX, the counting actually starts with one. I'm actually going to load this data. This data has an additional column of the index and that's what I'm actually going to load in my data model. All right. Now you can see that the data has been loaded into our Power BI file here. And I'm just going to right click here and make a new column. And in that column, I'm going to write a formula to refer to the previous row. So make a new column, call that column as previous row. And I'm going to use the formula called lookup value to be able to get the previous rows record. So in the lookup value function, the first input that I'm going to write is the result column name. That means what do you want as an output? So I'm looking for the output as the value here, the, the value, but not the current value, the previous value. That's the result column. Then it says, Hey, which column should I search for? So I'm saying, Hey, why don't you search for the index column? And then it says that, Hey, which values should I search for? So I'm going to say, Hey, why don't you pick up this value, subtract minus one from that and search for that value. So I'm just going to maybe search for the index value and say minus one and search for that value, close that bracket and press enter. And what this is actually going to do is against two, it will do a minus one and it will come to the first row and give you that particular value against in the second row. So now I have the previous record using DAX. All right. The final one. 
In case you'd like to refer to the previous row over a very large data, here is a little data modeling trick that you can actually follow. So I'm actually going to create two tables, the table which is this one and then another table that I'm actually going to create now and build a relationship between the two tables to actually refer to the previous row. So this table has all the columns. The additional column that I'm going to add in this particular table is an index column, which actually will start with zero. So in the index column, uh, in the add columns tab, index column actually starts with zero. That is part number one. After I have created the index column, which actually starts with zero, I have to reference this entire table and create another index column, which actually starts with one row or the first row. Uh, not with zero. So I'm actually going to come to this table here, right click and I'm just going to say that please reference this table and I'm just going to maybe give a new name here. So dummy data and what now in this table I'm going to do is first thing I will remove the load from this table. That means I'm going to remove all the other columns there are and just keep the value column because that is the column that I have to refer and get the previous rows value. So just keep this column and remove all the other columns. That is one. The second thing that I'm actually going to do is in this table, I'm actually going to start uh, creating an index. Um, but that is going to start with one, right? One row later. So in the index column, I'm just going to come here and start the index from one. Now, once I have these two tables created, I'm actually going to load these two tables in Power BI and build a relationship between the index column of the two tables. Home tab, close and apply. All right. You can see that the two tables have been loaded. I'm just going to go to the data model tab and the relationship has only been created. The index column has been linked with the index column. Now what I can do is I can simply write the VLOOKUP or the related function of tax to get the previous row this is going to be incredibly fast or I can just even drag and drop the columns of the index column and get the value from here and get the value from here and I will have the previous record very very easily so let's just go try the related function so I'm just going to go to the data here right click and make a new column and write the related function which is nothing but the previous row and I'm just going to write related and get the value from the dummy data table close the bracket press enter and you can see that I now get the previous row value that I actually duplicated uh, of the previous table so this is incredibly fast over a very large data set but you can definitely try it out and let me know uh, how the results actually go by all right that was all about referring to the previous row in power query or using DAX try out these methods and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be very happy to help thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one bye